Council meeting of July 6, 2021 is now called to order. We'll stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance, and I think we'll have Kathy yeah. lead us tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, everybody. Donna, how about a roll call? Councilmember Feast here. Mayor Dorsey here. Deputy Mayor Peterson here. Councilmember McDowell present. Councilmember Inesco here. Councilmember Schmidt here. And Councilmember Bode here. It's a lot easier to do that looking at you than on Zoom <laughs> when they're moving all around. <laughs> yeah. A lot better this way. Okay, does Doug Council have any late changes to the agenda tonight? Um, I move that we take the LTAC confirmation tables off the consent agenda and table them to the July 20th meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to table the LTAC. What was it called? LTAC confirmation letter. The LTAC confirmation letter. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, anything else to the agenda tonight? If not, we'll go on to any board reports by anybody. No, I don't have a board report. I just wanted to uh, thank the police chief for loaning me Shannon for a few hours uh, a couple weeks ago. She's very knowledgeable and informative of, of the problems in the city and the challenges to um, address those. Um, I think she might be a little bit, um, what's the word? I think, I think she could do some help. She's a one person she's, artist. She's very busy. The, uh, the dogs alone keep her busy, um, let alone getting out there and, and uh, addressing some of the code violations. And uh, she took me to three camps and many properties. And she, I just want to say she's knowledgeable. You should all ride with her for a couple hours and, and show us the challenges and that we have with code enforcement. Well, it is my pleasure, and I think Shannon is indispensable. All right. Before we move on, I'd like to say one quick thing that, you know, Jeff Knight is missing tonight. And hopefully he is not watching. <laughs> hopefully he's on the beach or on the water somewhere. He is watching. Um, <laughs> if he is, hi, Jeff. And we have Michelle other than filling in for him tonight. Okay. Let's move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're going to have a presentation. Council Member uh, Parks and Rec's proclamation, uh, Council Member Onesco is going to read it and, de and declaring July as Park and Recreation Month. Go ahead. You're up. Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of our communities throughout this country, including the city of Shelton. And whereas our parks and recreation are vital, vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of our community and region. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. And whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, and crime reduction. And whereas, Parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community. And whereas parks and natural re rec recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of air we breathe, providing vegetative buffers to, to development and produce habitat for wildlife. And whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure that ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives have designated July 
July as Parks and Recreation Month. And whereas, the City of Shelton recognizes the, the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Shelton Council that July be recognized as Parks and Recreation Month in the City of Shelton. Adopted tonight. All right, thank you, Eric. And now I think uh, Mark, Mr. Mark Ziegler would like to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor, Council members. Uh, I really want to appreciate uh, your work in uh, Parks and Recreation in our community, as well as everybody else in the Shelton community. I've spent close to 27 years here uh, managing Parks and Recreation, and a lot has changed over that time. The biggest change was the adoption and the approval of the Shelton Metropolitan Park District in 2010. Uh, we were obviously in a great recession at that point, and we were um, facing closure of many of our parks, if not, um, you know, com completely eliminating eliminating the, uh, the department at that time. Um, interesting time, scary time uh, for me personally as basically a one-man department on the administration side, but also <laughs> the folks that uh, take care of our parks and work really hard uh, day in and day out. Our community um, passed that measure. Um, we faced uh, some uncertainty with pro-rationing through the rest of the recession and didn't really, um, we weren't really able to fully realize the benefits that SMPD uh, that we do now. Um, but hopefully the community is seeing some of those, uh, some of their efforts and their, their support um, with that SMPD now with our facilities and uh, the improvements we're able to make, um, the programming we're able to uh, conduct, especially now coming out of our, our pandemic, uh, the properties that we've been able to acquire and the exciting projects we have coming up with not only the making angle properties, but the future, um, the former Simpson Railroad, um, a Northcliff Neighborhood Park, uh, as well as other planning and programming. Um, to um, kind of segue into that, we have one of our first time events, our, our field days scheduled on July 14th and 28th, 14th at Neyland Park, uh, the 28th up at Callanan Park. Uh, these are free events for the community to come up. Our recreation staff is going to provide some games, activities, and equipment. Um, folks can just come up and enjoy the park, um, play some games, have a good time uh, during those uh, afternoons, those two afternoons, and uh, provide, again, a lot of those things that, uh, that Councilmember Nisco just talked about in the proclamation. So, uh, again, I just really appreciate your support tonight and uh, recognizing Parks and Recreation Month in July in the uh, city of Shelton. All right, thank you, Mark. Okay. Now we'll move on to our general public comment where the council invites members of the public to speak for three minutes on any topic. Do we have anybody signed up tonight? I think the answer is no, but Mark's double check. Okay. okay. Oh, great. Thank you. You're welcome. There's no one signed up, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to our business agenda. Public Works Director Jay Harris has information for us about a project award for the Park Street overlay. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Council Jay Harris, your Public Works Director. Uh, so there's a little bit of an audio video delay out there of about 30 seconds, so I apologize for the timing. Uh, Sure. Last uh, two meetings or two meetings ago was about 30 seconds. Tonight it's about at 30 seconds again. Last meeting was 15 seconds, <laughs> so it's a little strange. So uh, Park Street is one of the projects uh, we are uh, proposing to pave this year. Um, we also have the chip seal on 13th, which uh, the contract's already been awarded uh, by you folks. Uh, so Park Street was the culmination of our paving package for this year. So the resolution that you have before you tonight didn't have a contractor's name in it. And the reason why we did that is we're trying to gain two weeks here. It's already gone to bid. I have the contractor's name. I'll give that to you guys in a second. But um, we wanted to try to save two weeks to just get paving in August, right? Um, so uh, the paving project is from uh, 7th to Highway 3. We bid it out on June 23rd. We had six bids uh, that we received. Uh, Granite Construction was the low bidder. Um, they were at 263,000. Um, this will be in your next resolution, by the way. Uh, we'll take what you see tonight and update it with all this information. 
Um, the engineer's estimate was 295. Um, so they were $30,000 under the engineer's estimate, which is good news. Um, we're expecting construction to start with granite construction was a low bidder um, in uh, probably later in August, maybe mid-August, if we can get all the contracts signed and all that. Um, so the city crews are currently out there. If you've driven Park Street, you'll see some patching that happened. Uh, that was for some galvanized water services that we removed and, and put copper in uh, services. We're also working on uh, grading of the ditch. Um, we're moving it away from the roadway. You want to get the water away from the road base, right? Um, and so we'll be done with our work in the next few weeks. Uh, there's some private owned lots along there. They don't have any homes on them. It's likely some services are going to go into them in the next month or so before the paving starts. Um, you know, depending on their permit status and where they get with all that, so they can get out of the street. We do have a no-cut policy, so if the road gets paved, we have a no-cut policy. It, what that means is for the gas company to go in there and decide they're going to rip up the road and put a new gas line all the way down it, they can't do that. But for uh, residential services, they can connect, but they got to uh, grind out like 15 feet each way and put in brand new asphalt so the patch is about 30 feet wide um, if the services uh, come in later for the utilities um, the trucks so the park street is not a, a truck route so in the shelton municipal code uh, we have roadways listed as truck routes highway three obviously railroad is another one um, how the trucks started going down uh, park i don't know but um, they're supposed to be going on Highway 3 or going down railroad. Um, they have some difficulties turning on Highway 3. You know, trying to take a right turn down there is a little bit of a problem. Um, so I've been talking to some truckers, and uh, what they need to do is just go to one of the other exits and not come down railroad. And so it increases their drive time a little bit. Um, anyways, we're going to be posting uh, no truck signs on the roadway. Uh, we did have a uh, proposal, the geotechnical engineer said we could add three and a half inches more paving and the section would accommodate trucks. But by the time we did that with a bunch of other grading and other drainage work and some curb work on, there's some curb on part of the road, it was gonna add about another $200,000 onto the project just to let trucks onto it. So we're saying with the ordinance, the way it is, no trucks, local street, and uh, we're going to post the signs as such. And so Jeff, uh, Manager Knighton, got involved. And he's been talking to SBI about those sorts of things. Um, so that's what I have tonight. So it's granite construction, $263,000. Engineer's estimate was two ninety-five, dollars And uh, that's my presentation. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> Do we have any public comment here? No, we no. don't. Okay, do we have a motion? Move that this item with the addition of the awarding resolution be forwarded to the action agenda for July 20th, uh, the July 20th council meeting for further consideration. Second. All right. We have any questions for Mr. Mr. J? I just wanted to thank you for clarifying on the no cut. That's been a, an issue for a really long time. And there's been a lot of confusion around it. So. I'm glad when you go read it, um, it's, it's, it's very specific. It allows utility people, extensions to lots, to continue to do that. You just, your repair, your repair costs go up. But other than that, it's a no-cut policy for, like, the gas company or cable or phone or somebody like that. Because we've notified you, if you have a project, go get it done. But for a, a residential or commercial services to buildings, um, you could still do that. Yes, but very few people understood it that way. I know, I've been describing this to people. Yeah. You gotta go in and read the municipal code and it allows for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta go read what it says, what council adopted. Yep. Okay? Cool. Do we have any idea of the number of trucks per day that are going through there? I mean, are we talking like hundreds of vehicles that are now having to detour elsewhere or this kind of yeah, I mean, my estimation, I don't live in the city, but I do drive the road, you know, three, four times a day. And it seemed like before we called SBI, 
there was probably 20 trucks a day. And it's the loaded trucks that are going eastbound that are the problem. The unloaded aren't really that big of a deal. Um, well, then one other thing I could say, the road need to be paved 10 years ago, right? So, I mean, that complicated things and water got in there and, you know, so the road got pounded by trucks when it should have been paved some years back. So, um, I, yeah, so it was about 20 and, and they're going other ways to, to get in. And every once in a while you'll see one that continues to use the road, whether they don't know about it or whatever. One other really important item too is our bridge on 7th Street over Goldsboro Creek. That is a city bridge, okay? Easy. When you walk on that bridge and a truck goes by, it shakes. We just had an evaluation of the bridge. There's nothing wrong with the bridge other than if you keep impacting it with heavy loads, we're gonna have a $3 million project plus on our hands. We wanna save our bridge, right? So that's another compelling reason not to send trucks that way. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, anybody else? Okay, thank you, Jay. You're welcome. We have a motion and a second to move this item with the addition of the awarding the resolution to the action agenda on July 20th, July 20th council meeting for further consideration. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. All right, move on to the action agenda. <clears throat> the first item on the action agenda is an, is an ordinance to update the Shoreline Master Program. Senior Planner Jason Dose has the details. Hey, Jason. Hey, hello. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you, Council Members. Um, I'm here one last time, I think, for our Shoreline Master Program update. This. Uh, just to give you a very quick recap, the council authorized a grant from the Department of Ecology in 2020 for us to do a required update. Basically, this is almost a maintenance and operations update, I guess you could call it, to our Shoreline Master Program. Not too much substantive, just you know, uh, uh, improving the citations of state law, updating some definitions, updating our wetlands guidance to guidance that is currently used by everybody, except us. You know, we haven't adopted it yet. Um, so what I'm hoping for after our public hearing on June 15th in which we received no comments, I'm hoping we can get a first reading of the ordinance that would adopt these changes and I could submit them to the Department of Ecology for uh, final approval. All right. Donna, do we have anyone signed up for public comment? That I'm you know. checking out as there. A, a, and you know what? I should be doing the 30-second timer oh, as yeah. well. So let me let me start that. And it's a point of order. It would be the second reading tonight, right? Yes, That's correct. Okay. That is correct. And it has remained unchanged since the first time you saw the draft changes in January. So, Mr. Mayor, there's no one here at the Civic Center signed up for public comment. So we just have a okay. few more seconds here to wait. Okay. All right. No Would you please comment. give us the second reading of Ordinance Number 1971-0621? Yes, I will. Ordinance number 1971-0621, an ordinance of the City of Shelton, Washington, relating to land use, amending Chapter 21.64, Critical Areas Protection, and Chapters 2, 5, 6, 7, and 8 of the City of Shelton Shoreline Master Program. Okay. Do we have a motion? I move to adopt Ordinance number 1971-0621 as presented. Second. Uh, any questions for J Jason? No. We have a motion and a second to approve ordinance number 1971-0621 as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Thank, Thank you. Um, our last action item this evening is a request to change the venue for LTAC event. 
senior clerk John Annault has more information for us. I'm sanitizing. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Council Members. I am here tonight to present this to you on behalf of Christmastown Kiwanis. They have a bluegrass from the forest festival that's normally held at Shelton High School. But this year there is construction at the high school so the Performing Arts Center is not available. And the South Mason Youth Soccer Organization has offered up their venue which is near MCRA. And so um, I am asking for your permission for Christmastown Kiwanis to hold that event just outside city limits, about one mile outside for this year. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. We have. This wouldn't be a precedent. This is not going to happen next year as well. No. Not that I'm aware of, right. no. Sorry. So, uh, anyone else? I, I don't have a problem with this whatsoever. Um, has anyone signed up for public comment? Let me put on my other hat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one out in the yeah. Civic Center. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Okay, Mr. Mayor, that's 30 seconds, so there's no public comment. All right, thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? I move to approve the location change request for this year's Bluegrass from the Forest to South Mason Youth Soccer Park on Johns Prairie Road. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the location change request for bluegrass from the forest to South Mason Youth Soccer Park on Johns Prairie Road. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we're gonna move on to administration reports. Michelle, will you give us a, give us a city manager report, please? I will. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Council, I hope everyone had a safe and happy fourth. Um, the MyCivic app that we deployed um, has been um, well received by the public. I've gotten some great feedback for that and we will have metrics for you um, available September 1st. So we'll be taking a look at that. Uh, city staff are also in the project planning stages for deployment of the EnerGov permitting and community planning software, um, which will really enhance and work seamlessly with our current suite of Tyler uh, software that we have. Um, the module itself focuses on permitting, planning, plan review, and code enforcement, and will really assist in automating and expediting these processes both for city staff and for the public as well. Um, so that's something we're very much looking forward to. Um, asset management is the next module uh, to roll out with a start date of October. We'll start the project planning phases for that one. Uh, the technology infrastructure upgrades are moving right along. Uh, starting in July, we'll start to deploy our thin client hardware as well as upgrading um, the city staff to Microsoft Office 365. And that allows us to work very securely um, and collaborate and communicate really easily with each other. So that's really all I have today. Did anyone have any questions? All right. Any questions for Michelle? I did, thank you. <laughs> Let's go to, um, does council have any new items for discussion? Okay, no? Well, this is gonna be a quick meeting. How about you, Chief? No? We got our homicide suspect. I heard that, that's terrific. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. he picked up our suspect last night and he is currently in Mason County Jail. Uh -huh. We're happy about that. Yes. Okay, our next meeting will be Tuesday, July 20th, 2021 at 6 o'clock. This meeting is adjourned at 625.